so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Can I rewind it real quick? I want y'all to hear this. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Oh, y'all missed it. But against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. People of God said amen. amen. I need to tell you and talk to you from this subject. And it's an encouragement. And I want you to look at the person next to you and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning good morning to you. I have something to tell you. You are an overcomer. Oh, I need you to look at your other neighbor right quick. If you will leave that and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning. good morning. So glad you're here. Glad you're here. You, are you are an overcomer. Oh, somebody give God praise right now if you believe that. Let's pray right where we are. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence in this house. And we believe you by faith that you would move like never before in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. And we ask that you would speak right now, even use me. Hide me behind your cross. Fresh anointing, let it fall fresh. That your word would go forth with boldness and with clarity. And it will accomplish the very thing that you have set out for it to do before the foundation of the world. We thank you right now for clarity. We thank you for wisdom. We thank you for insight. That you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive the word that you have set out for us today. In the name of Jesus. We thank you in advance that the enemy is already defeated. And we thank you for hindering and rebuking every scheme and plot that he has to try to distract and destroy and to dis dis dismiss us, dismiss this word. We know that it will fall on good ground and we will receive it by faith. So right now in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would convict us, instruct us, move us, motivate us, change us, make us more like you that in the end your will will be done in our hearts and our minds and in our lives. In Jesus' name. So we love you, we honor you, and we ask right now that you speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. And we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name. People of God shouted, amen. amen. You are an overcomer. I am convinced that one of the main keys to walking in spiritual maturity is to have the full understanding of the reality of spiritual warfare. If you are going to walk as a mature saint, it's going to be extremely necessary that you fully understand the reality of spiritual warfare. Can I take it a step further? This is going to mess somebody's heads up. Not only as a mature saint should you have an understanding of the reality of spiritual warfare, but you should also embrace the reality of spiritual warfare. Somebody's looking at me side eye right now, and they said, Pastor, you don't understand what I've been going through. The enemy has been on my trail. He's been trying to steal my joy. Every time I turn around, there is a lie thrown in my face. He wants me to give up and throw in the towel. It thing seems like things are crumbling around me. How dare you tell me to embrace spiritual warfare? But yet, 
In the midst of that, I say once again, it is important that we embrace spiritual warfare. Why do you say that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. See, you've been going through. You've been complaining, some of you. You've been saying, I'm done with it. When is it going to end? But can I encourage you with one fact? Watch this. The reason why you ought to embrace the reality of spiritual warfare, watch this, because spiritual warfare is a confirmation of the anointing on your life. Spiritual warfare is a confirmation of the anointing on your life. The enemy doesn't attack anyone that's not a threat to his kingdom. The enemy is not going after folk who are not running after Jesus. So if you find yourself under spiritual attack, let it be a confirmation and a compliment to you that you have a powerful anointing that the Lord has on your life. And can I tell you something about spiritual warfare? You must understand this. The enemy is not trying to just attack your finances so you'll be broke by the end of the week. He's not trying to just disrupt your day so you can have an uncomfortable bad day at work. The enemy is not trying to come in and make you uncomfortable. Can I tell you something? The enemy wants to come and make you unavailable. Yeah. He's not about you being uncomfortable. He's about you being unavailable. Because if you're uncomfortable, yeah, you might squirm a little bit. But if you're unavailable, then God won't be able to use you for his glory. See, you're getting it twisted because the enemy is not just trying to disturb you and make you mad. He's trying to steal, kill, and destroy. So understand, he's not after your church attendance, but he is after your kingdom assignment. You must understand that the enemy is not just trying to attack you to tease you. He's trying to kill your destiny. So people who are called by God understand that they have a destiny and there is a calling on their life. And as a result of the high calling in Christ Jesus, the enemy ain't going to be happy about it. So do not find it strange when you find yourself in spiritual warfare. But you take it as a compliment. The next time the enemy attacks me, you know what I'm going to tell him? Well, thank you, bro. For real. You like my anointing? I appreciate that. You coming against me at that level that must speak to the level that God wants to use me. You're coming against me at this kind of place. Ooh, that must speak to the greatness that's on my life. Maybe God wants to use me in such a way that the enemy has to go out of his way to steal my joy. Go out of his way to steal my peace. Go out of his way to take my strength. But you know what? The devil is a liar because people that know spiritual warfare embrace spiritual warfare because all they do is read one line of scripture. If I have anointing, then that means greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So as a result, hallelujah, the warfare is signed that God is going to use us and take us higher in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me take it a step further because we're going to go into the word of God. And he's going to give us keys to walking in the victory as it pertains to spiritual warfare. But I need to tell you something. And as we are all getting ready to walk in spiritual maturity, since there is an existence of spiritual warfare... Listen to me, spiritually mature saints can't just do stuff because they feel like it. I'm talking to myself here. Spiritually mature saints can't just do whatever they feel like. 
See, there is a problem if you can go to church on Sunday but turn up in the club on Wednesday. There is a problem if I am comfortable in the house of God but just as comfortable in the world. There is a problem because we miss the reality of the warfare and the enemy that's on our trail. See, because you understand if I am walking in immaturity, if it comes in front of me and it makes me feel good, I'll do it. If I walk in immaturity, if my flesh kicks up and you make me mad enough, I'm just going to say whatever comes out my mouth. Ah, if I see, if she, uh oh, this gonna mess somebody up. If she's cute enough, I'm talking to, I'm talking to see somebody back there. If, if she's fine enough, I may just holler at her. Because if I'm immature, I'm not thinking about destiny, I'm just thinking about the now. But when you are walking in spiritual maturity, watch this, you understand that your decisions have spiritual consequences. And you understand that sometimes if I make a decision against God, I align myself for extra spiritual attack. Are you seeing this? And we've got to realize that our time is precious and we do not uh, use the time of God wisely if we're doing whatever we want to do, but putting ourselves willingly in the line of fire. Are you seeing it? Because watch this, y'all, because when I'm spiritually mature, I'm not thinking about the blessing of the temptation, but I'm thinking about the curse of the consequence. Yeah. Let me say that again. I think y'all missed that. If I'm spiritually mature, I'm not thinking about the blessing and the benefit of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the temptation, the feeling of it, but I'm thinking about the consequence and the curse that's attached to it. And I begin to say, I could go down that road with you, but I love God too much. And I do not want to put people around me in harm's way. So I say, I'm going to go ahead and do it God's way because it's not worth it to do it my way. See, when I look at it and I assess it, my maturity says I want to obey the word of God, even though my flesh is telling me yes. See, my mind might be telling me yes, but if my spirit is telling me no, I've got to go with the no because I don't have time to be taken out by enemy warfare by aligning myself in the line of fire. I don't know about you, but I bumped my head too many times five years ago to still be flirting with the devil. I hurt myself 10 years ago and I don't have time in this season to waste it on foolishness that's going to put me back in the very bondage that God delivered me from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So as I understand the reality of spiritual warfare, I understand that I was created for victory. Did y'all know that? As I understand the reality of spiritual warfare, I understand that I am created for victory. So I can't be created for victory, but make defeated decisions. I can't be created for victory and make defeated decisions. Because I would hate to be in the cycle of crying out to God because the warfare is too heavy only to find out that the reason why the warfare is heavy is because my decisions keep taking me to the line of fire. And God said, yes, you got to go through some valleys. But if you got to go through some, you ain't got to create them. Somebody say amen. And I'm believing by faith that somebody is going to walk in true victory. Not the victory that you shout on on Sunday, but the victory that you're walking on Tuesday. Not the victory that you can talk about, but the real victory that you experience day to day. It's not an occurrence, it's who you are. 
Hallelujah. When you get a chance, look up on YouTube. My man by the name of Jonathan Nelson, he wrote a song quite a few years back, and it was called, My Name is Victory. And that's who you are. We're going to go into the word and we're going to walk. Are, are, are we here? Can we take some notes? Because there's going to be a key to your authentic victory today. And I am so excited for you. Somebody say amen. amen. So we're in the book of Ephesians. Hallelujah. We're in the book of Ephesians. This is one of the uh, prison epistles. We talked about Philippians last week was one that Apostle Paul, he wrote in prison. He wrote this. In prison, some scholars think that this is one of the first ones that he wrote uh, in prison. This is a very uh, power-packed epistle. You look at Ephesians chapter 1, and it talks about we were created in him before the foundations of the world to be blameless in his sight. In Ephesians chapter 2, we see that it says that we are created and uh, we are saved by grace, not uh, by grace through faith, not by works so that anyone should boast. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You being a good person is not going to get you saved. Amen. Yep, you saying, well, I ain't hurt nobody, I ain't kill, I ain't rob a bank, that's not going to get you saved. When you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is what gets you saved. Yeah, yeah. And he says, we are his workmanship, created in him to do good works that he has prepared for us beforehand, that we would walk in them. You have to understand when you're looking for your purpose and your destiny, God doesn't have to adjust and create a plan on the fly. He already created it before you were born. We see, even as we go on, uh, he mentions fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4. He talks about apostles and uh, pastors and teachers, uh, 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 prophets and evangelists. And he goes, Ephesians 5 gives us practical teaching on how to treat our families and how to love our wives as Christ loved the church and for wives to respect their husband. But then we get to Ephesians 6. And I believe in this text, there is a word directly for you. So watch. He says this, and he saves the best for last. He says in chapter uh, 6, verse 10, finally, or in New Living Translation, a final word. Watch this. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. If you are looking to walk in authentic victory, I just read it. You're welcome. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Point number one, can you write this down? These are going to be the keys to authentic victory. And we're going to walk through the text and teach it. Authentic victory is connected to God's capacity. Let me say it again. Authentic victory is connected to God's capacity. You, I'm going to make sure that I say that because watch this. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the might and his mighty of his power, power of his might. There are a lot of people that look at me and say, pastor, I am being strong, but still nothing's being changed. I am standing up, but how come I'm still losing instead of winning? How many know it's the difference between being strong in the Lord and strong in yourself? Many of us who call ourselves strong are strong in ourselves. Oh, this is going to mess somebody up. What does it mean to be strong in yourself? See, and nobody here is like that. I'm looking out here. Nobody here is like this. But people who are strong in themselves have control issues. People who are strong in themselves have control issues. You know why? Because they declare and decree and they beat their chest three times and say, I got this. And they say, you know what? I don't need no help because I've got it figured out. And all around them, the balls are dropping. All around them, things are going out of control. And we are in denial thinking that we got it all together. Man of God, where are you? We were taught many times as men, oh, we can't show emotion no matter what's going on. You got to have the faith. You got to suck it up. Ain't nothing wrong. And we will not admit that everything is tearing down inside of us and we need some help because we're sick. We're so strong in ourselves, we end up being weak in our situation. 
You've got to be careful because there in this, there are some places where I see the enemy can come in. Because sometimes the enemy can tempt you by calling you strong in yourself. You don't need to pray. You too smart. You got the wisdom. You got those degrees. You've been here. You're built for this. You know how to get it done. And what you end up doing is leaning to your own understanding. Oh, am I helping somebody here? And what God says is you've got to be strong, not in you, but in me. How are you strong in the Lord? One of the greatest revelations I ever got. Stefan, I don't know if I was living in D.C. or living down here when I got this revelation. But the revelation that I got, that if God's strength is not being made perfect in my weakness, I am nothing. I had to come to the realization that by myself, my human wisdom is not going to figure it out. By myself, my intellect is not going to get it done. By myself, I can't war in the spirit in my flesh, but I've got to walk in the spirit of God. And that was one of the greatest revelations that I ever got, that I can't do it by myself. But when you are strong in the Lord, your strength is not in the context of what you went through, but your strength is in the context of who God is. Your strength is not in the context of your spiritual gifts or your talents or your intellect or your charm, but your strength is in the fullness of the power of God. So too many people end up losing sleep because you are comparing your battle to your flesh. And by design, your battle is bigger than your flesh. You only six feet tall, but your battle is much bigger. But when you begin to be strong in the Lord, God will tell you, you will not have to fight. The battle is not yours, but God's. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What if I told you part of the reason why you can embrace Spiritual warfare is because the enemy's persecution is an opportunity for God's demonstration. Whenever, watch this, whenever God allows a storm that's bigger than you, he wants to let you know that he's bigger than your storm. When he allows the rain that's bigger than you, he wants you to know that he's stronger than your rain. When he allows a situation that's greater than what you can figure out, you have to realize his wisdom is infinite. He was here before the beginning began. He's the alpha and the omega. He's the first and the last. He was, he is, and he is to come. And there is nothing too hard for him. I've never seen a battle that he can't win. I've never seen a sickness he can't heal. I've never seen a child that he couldn't take out of the wrong crowd. I've never seen a marriage that he couldn't fix. I couldn't see a financial situation where he couldn't come through and restore. I've never seen depression that God couldn't turn into joy. I couldn't never seen strife that God turns to peace. Every time I look around, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. So when I see my battle, I begin to think about the power of God. And my strength comes in knowing that he's all powerful. My strength comes in knowing that he's all knowing. My strength comes in knowing that he's all seeing. My strength comes in knowing that he's a way maker. My strength comes in knowing he's a miracle worker. My strength comes in knowing that he's a strong tower so now even when I'm weak I am strong because I can be like the apostle Paul I can boast in my weakness so the next time they
with every series, you don't just come out and play basketball the exact same way. You go back and watch film. And when you watch film, it's the coach's job to make adjustments. So what they found in the first two games is that Chris Paul, who was the point guard of the Phoenix Suns, was having his way. He was playing great basketball. He was setting all of his people up to where they need to be in their spots. He was making timely shots, and it was clear to Milwaukee that Chris Paul was the leader of the whole team. So they went and watched film and said, if we can make an adjustment on the leader, it would disrupt the flow of the whole team. So guess what they did? The next game, in game three, when Chris Paul got the ball, Drew Holiday didn't wait for him to get to half court to start guarding him. He started picking him up as soon as he got the ball 94 feet and started pestering him and disrupting his flow and following him wherever he was. And guess what ended up happening? It distracted him that one game a usually turnover-free Chris Paul got five turnovers. And he ended up being distracted, and it caused his team to be out of sync and out of sorts. So the Milwaukee Bucks strategy, we don't have to game plan against the whole team, but if we just game plan against the leader, it would impact the whole team. What are you talking about, Pastor? Men of God, I need you to come here. The devil is after your family. And there is a strategy that he has put up in your family. And he said to himself, if I can't get to the baby, if I get to the father, I'm going to end up getting to the baby. If I can't get to the wife, if I get to the husband, by design, it's going to end up getting to the wife. So you have to understand the strategy of the enemy. When the enemy comes to attack your house, he usually tries to come for the head of the house because the head is in charge. And the Bible says, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. And you've got to make sure you are not on some foolishness because there's a strategy that's against you, man of God, not just for you, but for your children. Not just for you, but for your marriage. And I need every man to wake up under the sound of my voice and know that there is a target on your back because you are the head and not the tail. There is a target on your back because you're called by God to be the priest of your home. There's a target on your back because when you start praying, the enemy has to flee. When you start calling on the name of the Lord, all of a sudden everybody lines up in your house. When you begin to cover your children, all of a sudden they start walking in the ways of the Lord. So you have to realize if there's a strategy against you, you got to have some strategy for God. Are you seeing it? And I'm tired, and I'm seeing it even in the body of Christ. That's why you should never stop praying for your pastors. We got a pastor that you've just met for the first time. You know his name is Stephon Bell, but all you need to know that he needs prayer because he is in a leadership role, and there are some people that he's called to shepherd not just at his congregation, but at his house. And when you begin to pray, that's the strategy that you need because you know that he's under attack and you know that things are going to come against him. But we also know no weapon that may formed against us shall be able to prosper. I dare somebody to begin to pray for the man of God. Don't talk bad about him. Don't beat him over the head, but pray for them. Don't talk about how they're absent and how they're not there, but pray for their hearts because the enemy is coming for our houses. But guess what? The devil cannot have my family. 
I'm going to declare it by myself. Is there somebody that makes that declaration? You can say it with me. The devil will not have my family. The devil will not have my son. The devil will not have my two daughters. The devil will not have my wife. I got to do something different. I got to pray and fast. I've got to seek God like never before. I've got to cover my household. And I'm believing by faith that the power of God will move according to the faith that I have. And I believe in him. And my household will be covered in the name of Jesus. Do you realize how much danger is trying to get at your door? But do you realize how much danger will never meet your door? Because it'll be an unseen danger that you'll never see because you've made up your mind to pray without ceasing. And the enemy couldn't even make it to your house because God blocked it in the spirit even before he came. Your restoration is connected to your preparation. We talked about disciplines. We talked about, yes, reading the word and praying. But watch this. I'm preparing a strategy. Because watch this. When we know, and I want you to get this, y'all. There's always a strategy in terms of how the enemy attacks us. So with being successful in spiritual warfare... It's not just about that he attacks you. Sometimes you got to know how he attacks you. Are y'all seeing this? So the other night, and Teresa's going to kill me for this. The other night, I have this thing that um, I get attacked in my sleep. Can I, just, can I be real? I get attacked by the enemy in my sleep. Quite often, I'm not the only one in here that that's what it happens to. Uh, he attacked me in my sleep. Um, the other night, I was having a dream, and one setting, I was back at college. I don't know how I got back to college, but then on the other setting, I was jogging home. Y'all seen that movie Scream? <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about? Amen. The movie Scream, where the dude got the long robe with the, with the white mask. Uh -huh. I dream. I was jogging home, and I looked behind me, and a dude with the screen mask was running full speed at me, holding a knife. Can you imagine if you're on for a nice, a nice jog, and you look and see somebody coming at you with so much fervor? So naturally, I woke up like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. and Teresa Twiggs, I love her to death. You know what she did? She just was, babe, 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 you are your. Uh. <laughs> I mean, babe, are you all right? <laughs> babe, tell me what happened. I need to pray for you. You know what she did? She just walked, she walked up. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and y'all are mad at her, but I'm not. You know why? Because she understands that that is the enemy's strategy to attack me in my sleep. And we've prayed so many times in the middle of the night in the past that she's seen this before and she's already seen the victory so she didn't have to stay up all night wondering if I was okay. She could just roll over and go back to sleep because she's seen this movie before and she knows within herself you can chase him in his dreams but you can't catch him in real life. You can try to torment him in his dreams but you can never come and tackle him in real life. So he says, that's just a dream. And she rolled over and so did I because I began to smile and say, Lord, thank you that the devil will never catch me. 
And when you begin to understand the strategies of the enemy, you'll begin to see him even before he gets there. And instead of you panicking, you'll praise him. Because when you see him, you say, oh, there he go again. What's up, bro? What do you, what you need? You good? I already know I'm victorious, and thank you again for confirming it for me. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. This is the last part, and we're going home. Are y'all being blessed by this? Amen. We got one more, and we got to go home. Oh, I feel, I feel the Lord here. Somebody's going to get free. Watch what he says. Oh, man. Sometimes the text will preach itself. For we, verse 12, are not fighting, watch this, against flesh and blood enemies. I'm just going to read that again. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Watch this. Point number four. Write this down. Ooh. Write this down. The worst enemy to face is the one you can't identify. Wow. Let me say it one more time. The worst enemy to face is the one you can't identify. It's right there in the text. If Paul had to admonish and tell the people that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, or oh, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, it lets me know how much the enemy likes to attack, but also how much the enemy likes to disguise. Oh, I want y'all to see it. He's not just the God that wants to attack us, but he's also a God that, dis he's also not that devil that attacks us, but he is an enemy that disguises. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies. Paul had to say that because the enemy loves to disguise himself. And when the enemy attacks, he likes to disguise himself as your spouse. He likes to disguise himself as your grandmother. He likes to disguise himself as your father. Ooh, are you seeing it? So now you are in a battle in a warfare and you are plotting revenge instead of on your knees praying for God to get the spirit out. Somebody hear this. Many times we don't win because we fight the wrong fight. Many times we don't win is because we're bitter about what somebody did to us five years ago only to find out it wasn't them, but it was the enemy working through them. Oh, I want to get somebody free right now. I sense it in the room. At least three people in here are holding a grudge against somebody who's done you wrong. And yes, they should take responsibility because we do have free will. And yes, it did hurt. But one thing that I realize is that many times people have a way of acting out of their own pain. And when they act out of their own pain, what ends up happening is they begin to be a hurt person that hurts people. And in the midst of their actions, the enemy is in disguise. Because it's really not them wanting to take you out, but the enemy is behind what they said. That's why the Bible says the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So when you are in anger and you're in that place, you say things that you don't mean. You say things that you say, I don't even know why I said that. The reason why you said it, because the enemy got a hold of you. And we've got to get to a point that we understand exactly who we're fighting because if not we will put the enemy label on the wrong place at the wrong time and we got our boxing gloves on and we need to have the word in our hand are you seeing this there's going to be a change 
and a shift in your house when you understand the real enemy at work. Stop being at war with your son. Your son is just going through a time. Your son doesn't need your condemnation. Your son needs your prayers. Your husband doesn't need you constantly beating him down about what he's not. But you've got to get before God and say, Lord, change the heart of the man. Because you can't do it. They can't do it. But only God can do it. So watch this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So here's what true victory looks like. True victory looks like when me and my wife are at a disagreement and we sharply disagree. Anybody in here sharply disagree with your spouse? I know y'all never do. Y'all just look so angelic and just that never happens to y'all. I know that's such a blessing. Y'all so holy, amen. But some folk who have sharp disagreements but this thing, nah, nah, homie. And he, she, she like, nah, homie. And he like, nah, homie. And y'all are holding on to y'all guns. But y'all can get to a point where y'all don't speak for two weeks. But God says, what are you doing? You need to go to your spouse and say, baby, I love you. We don't agree, but you are not my enemy. You got to go to your family member and say, you know what? I don't agree what you're doing, but you are not my enemy. You got to go to your coworker and say, I know you're doing some shady stuff, but you are not my enemy. My enemy ain't from Marietta. My enemy ain't from Washington, D.C. My enemy is from the pits of hell where he's going to end up burning eternally in the lake of fire. So when I go to pray, I don't pray with my flesh. I don't ask God to get revenge on people. I pray for the hearts of somebody because that person that did you wrong is somebody that God can make right. That person that's walking wayward today will be walking holy tomorrow. That person that's in darkness today will be marking in the walking marvelous light tomorrow. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pray for their heart. I'm going to release them to God and I'm going to fight against the real enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Blood, but powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. So the enemy that I fight against, you can't quite see it tangibly in the world. But I see it in the spirit realm. And that's the enemy that is cast down and going to the lake of fire. That's the enemy who God calls us to triumph in his name. That's the enemy who God has given us victory over. Because he's already overcome the world. And we've got to get to a point that we shift our focus because I don't want to fight against anybody in my household. I'm just going to lift you up in prayer. But at the end of the day, there is a real enemy and I see him for who he is. He is a liar. He has no power. He shall come out. He shall be cast out in the name of Jesus. My house shall be restored in the name of Jesus. We will walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Your son shall get saved in the name of Jesus. Your daughter shall get delivered in Jesus' name. Your uncle shall come out of pornography in Jesus' name. Uh, your daughter is going to walk free and know who Jesus is in the name of Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. So put down your boxing gloves and open up your mouth. Put down your carnal weapons and grab a hold of your spiritual weapons. Stop speaking death into your family and start speaking the word into the atmosphere. And I promise that you will see God help you to overcome in Jesus' name. Because at the end of the day, you are an overcomer. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. And we would not be deceived any longer in this season because the enemy is counting on us knowing something's wrong but not seeing the root. In this season, the Lord will show you and you will see the absolute root of what's against you. 
The enemy will, sh that God will show you those things in your life that the enemy has attacked in so you can understand, so you can offer them to God. You can't offer to God what you don't know. You can't give it to God if you can't call it out. So the Lord is going to teach us how to call it out in the name of Jesus for exactly what it is. Spiritual warfare is not behavior management. We got to go. Spiritual warfare is not behavior management. Spiritual warfare is when we're believing God who's all powerful to come against the forces of darkness around us that we would have victory. Because I don't want to pray against your behavior. I want to pray for your heart. That God moves in your heart. And when your heart is changed, your behavior will change. I need a couple of victorious people. If you are victorious, I need you to stand to your feet and give God glory right now. If you know you are victorious. Somebody give God praise right now. If you've been tired. Praise God. He's blessing. He's moving in his word. And I'm thankful for how he's looking to grow us in this season. We can't stay where we are. God is going to push us to the next place and the next level. And he's going to do it by growing us in our spiritual maturity. And I don't know about you. I'm excited about it. So I thank you for tuning in. And I hope you were blessed. And I hope you were even challenged by this word. Because I'm believing that there's a transformation that's happening in all of us. And we will never be the same Oh, man, I'm looking forward to the other side of your transformation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. This is a time that you can make a decision for Jesus Christ. And this is the best way for you to grow in your spiritual maturity is to walk in step with God. So if you wish to give your life to Christ, rededicate your life or join Freedom Movement Church. All you have to do is write in the comments, send us an inbox on our Freedom Movement website or our Facebook page, and we will welcome you with open arms. And we're grateful for what God is doing in your life, in Jesus' name. You can also partner us with us in giving. We thank you for your continued generosity and ask that you would sow towards the kingdom work that's taking place at Freedom Movement Church. We would love for you to join us in person. If you are in the Marietta, Georgia area, come on by at 11 o'clock. All you gotta do is just RSVP on our Freedom Movement website and we'd love to see you. God is doing a work and the Spirit of God be moving up in here. You hear me? So uh, we look forward to seeing you. This is Pastor Jeff. We got to go. Can't wait until next week where God continues to move us into spiritual maturity. But I got one more word for you. Grow up. Love y'all so much, Pastor Jeff.